hi guys welcome back to another video if you're new here my name is Rowena and if you're not new here thank you so much for coming back now this is part three of a three parties that I'm putting out on assessment centers and the individual activities that a candidate needs to do in an assessment center this part three will be focused on presentation in part one we focused on what an assessment center is that I delved into the first activity which is usually a group work at a typical assessment center in part two i dealt into interviews so those videos by the time you're seeing this would have already been public you can go check those out and i would highly recommend start from part one go to part two and then you check this video out it is the last video in the three-part series if you're interested continue watching you're now invited to an assessment day Firstly, congratulations, clap yourself because you have done extremely well to make it to the final step. Understand that an assessment center is the final step through the graduate recruitment process in most instances. So feel proud because you've made it thus far. When you are invited into an assessment center, you may be given a list of instructions or things to prepare for the assessment center and one such instruction could be that you will have a presentation to do and in most instances there is a set of instructions given around the presentation they might say choose a topic and when you choose a topic you might need to tell us the situation about the topic tell us why you did it what the objectives were how you tackled these objectives and what the results were and you need to present that so on the day when you come for assessment center you now know that this is what you have to do when you are preparing your presentation always ask yourself what position am i applying for and then find some experience that will tie in nicely to the position that you're applying for yes it doesn't necessarily mean to be directly related, but it should demonstrate that you have some transferable skills that can be used in the position. So if, for example, if I were applying for a communications department of a company, when I'm doing my presentation, I would choose a presentation that highlighted me in a way where I had to communicate or I had to divulge some information to some people in a way that I was able to demand some results or actions from it and so then whoever is assessing me would see that this person has transferable skills so in this role it requires that a person needs to be outspoken or they might need to do presentation so that they can use powerpoint slides or something i would make sure that i read the job description and then also tie in my presentation to that that is one tip that I would do. I think it is definitely helpful. It is lovely when that presentation ties into what could potentially be useful for this job. So if you're one of those persons going to present in an assessment center, try to find an example that as closely relates or links or could transfer some skills to that job. Now, expectations. Because bear in mind, you're watching my video because you're interested to understand what's to come right or even if it's past already you just want to brush up on it fair enough in my experience this is how the day usually goes for the first activity which is a group activity you have a number of assessors set to observe you they do not ask you questions they just observe you in the interview you have two or three assessors or interviewers interviewing you right asking you direct questions However, for the presentation, usually it is all the assessors that are there for the day are sat in a room and you are presenting one by one to those assessors. Be prepared for that because that can throw people off. Sometimes they'll think, oh, I'm just presenting to one person. Be prepared for that. You may find that you only have to present to one. But prepare yourself to present to one person. Then you come in and you see that, oh, no, I have to present to eight people. That can definitely throw people off their game. So be prepared just in case if you are presenting to all assessors at once. It is, in most cases, to your benefit to present to more than one people at one time. Just because at the end of your presentation, they all have to congregate and then decide on a final score for you. And there may be people who will be like, oh, no, I think that's too harsh. You can give this person this you know what i mean i've seen that so don't feel intimidated when you see that it is too 
most times your own benefit to present to a number of assessors at once. Once you understand that and you've done a preparation, you've found a topic that's closely linked, or if not, you find a topic that has some transferable skills to the job that you're applying for, then you now are on the day, have gone through your different activities for the day, and you're now on a final one. You're almost there. And this one, based on how many assessors you're presented to, can be a bit nerve wracking and it is expected. And so because of that, as assessors, we do not tend to grade you on nervousness. We expect it, in fact. Even for us professionals like doing this, it can be nerve wracking to present to a group of people who you do not know and talk through a lengthy time for them, right? Don't worry. They won't be harsh on you. So I've seen instances where actually we have hired persons who thought they didn't do as well on the presentations. They were very nervous and it, it came through. But you may be surprised to find that what we grade you on in the presentation is not what you thought. I am not here expecting you to be the most confident person in the world. I mean, it helps if you're confident and it helps if you're charismatic because people are drawn to that sort of stuff. But that is not what we grade you on. We don't grade you on bravery and how well you're able to speak without making a mistake or babble over a word. No, we actually grade you on the content of your presentation and we grade it on how well it would apply to this situation. But we also grade you on how well you were able to explain and tell us the story. You're presenting to us on something. Did you follow the instructions that you were given before the assessment day? You were given a list of instructions, right? Did you follow it? Did you have clear, concise uh, like method of presenting? Was your presentation clear? Was it in an orderly manner that I would say, okay, I can see why you structured it like this. And I asked you a question on your presentation. Were you able to sufficiently answer me so that I was no clearer if there was anything that was ambiguous in my mind? If I said to you, what would you have changed on this? Would you, would you understand it, what I'm saying to you? Like, are you presenting this and I am convinced that you actually did the work on this? I have sat in many uh, presentations and I was not utterly convinced that this person fully understood what they were presenting. So if I then followed up with a question, the person didn't answer me in a manner that I felt sufficient information was given. You want to make sure that you chose a topic that you are comfortable with, please. Even if it doesn't apply to the job, I should be able to see transferable skills. You need to be able to walk me through every single thing that you are doing. Everything comes back to STAR. If you are new here and you haven't watched my previous two videos, when I say STAR, it's an acronym. It means situation, the S, situation, T, task, A, action, and R, results. It's a storytelling pattern and it simply is making sure that the storyteller which in this instance would be yourself as you're the one presenting to us assessors, give us sufficient context so that we are fully aware of everything, just so we can make informed decision. If you tell me about the situation and they tell me the action, it's still not full because I don't know what the results were. So if you leave out any step of this, I still am lacking information. Make sure that you're presenting in a logical manner, as I mentioned earlier. Make sure that it flows. Don't be skipping to the results. Then you come to tell me the action. They came to tell me the situation. And like, make sure it flows in a logical manner so that I am following you every step of the way. You can usually judge whether or not your flow is logical because you will see context clues. You will see body language. You can read someone's body language. You see them nodding along with you. Or if you see their, their face crunch up like, huh, you can then use that to tell you that, okay, maybe I need to expand on this a bit more just so that they're, they're not there looking confused. You can read people's body language while you're presenting and practice. Practice, practice improves things. It may not make you perfect, but it improves things significantly, right? You should have practice so much that you know what side is coming next so that you're not bubbling and you're not having to stay on the side for a quick moment before you understand oh oh this is the side and you know what i mean i've seen instances where it was clear that there was no practice or any really thought put into this because people have you know skipped and they're like 
and they sat there looking at the slide for a good little minute in life anytime you're going to present something to a group of people always make sure that you practice so that you know in your head you might not know verbatim or word for word what is going to come up next but you know where this should be leading and that's why the logical sequence of your presentation is also very important why because it should follow a logical manner so that even without you knowing you should think okay logically this would come next i need to explain this and your slides should follow that when you do a presentation pretend as if you yourself know nothing about it and then go through that presentation with a mindset and see if you would be clear on the topic all right so i always before you present to anyone always say okay what if i knew nothing about this topic let me go through this presentation and let me see if at the end of it i would without having any prior knowledge to anything that i'm saying here would be good when you're doing a presentation at an assessment center, understand that you're presenting on something that is not known by the assessors. This is the first time we're seeing this. We may not have the background in whatever topic you're going in. Make sure that it is logical. Yeah? Make sure that I can see transferable skills coming through. If you mess up on your words, don't feel too bad because as I mentioned, we're not grading you on just your presentation skills. Okay, it's good if you're confident, it's good if you're charismatic. It, it, it's lovely because naturally people gravitate towards a charismatic person, a confident person. But even if you mess up, please don't feel dissuaded or discouraged. Continue going through. As long as you make sure that your content is good, make sure that is the first step. Making sure that your content is good. And I've seen in a lot of times once your content is good and it follows a logical manner that people tend to become more confident as they present because oh, okay this is making sense you're seeing people nodding with you you're getting a context clue in the body language that you're reading from your assessors and so people naturally start to feel better about it and they start to feel okay i can do this and you can see the little confidence coming through so that background that homework stuff that you did it is important to make sure that your presentation goes well your assessors are not there to trip you up. You know, when they're looking at you, good assessors, as I mentioned earlier, should be making sure that you feel confident and comfortable. So, they're going to try to do a little stuff that, to encourage you. And even if you feel shy, please work on your presentation skills as well, because as I mentioned, they do help. Keep eye contact. Walk around the room. Own your space. You're presenting. If you stand one place and you're just looking at me like this, I'm going to feel like... You know, are you okay? Is that person all right? Present to someone. Present to a, your, your parents, your siblings, a friend, whatever it is. Present to them and let them give you feedback like, oh, is this good? Oh, is this not? Present to someone who will be honest with you as well. Because your assessors definitely will be. And when you do get questions, please understand the question that you are asked first. And if you, again, need to have them elaborate the same tips that i gave you in the interview in part two go rewatch it and apply it here understand the questions first if you don't understand the question it can be towards your detriment if you answer and it was not what was asked of you it can be to your own detriment so understand what that is and don't worry we all feel confident we all mess up we sometimes you know presenting is not the best thing for everyone so don't feel too bad if you stumble and you think i could have done a better one most often than not people can do better presentations most often than not people go home with regrets thinking oh man why didn't i do this don't feel bad it's okay so just make sure that your content matters those instructions that you were given before the assessment day listen follow them and then come on a day and just come confident. If you're a Christian, pray. Okay, pray that whatever it is. Just come confident on the day. And just trust that your personality. And if you're the right fit for the company, that you will be chosen. If you're not the right fit, it's also okay. If you're not chosen, it's also okay. It's just a fact that you may not be the right fit. And when I say that, it's not necessarily bad on you. It's just that the company might not also be the best company for you. Sometimes we take rejection as negative things. Sometimes it's for our own benefit. So if you are not at this moment the successful candidate chosen, go again. 
different company, different opportunities, understand that company culture and see where you would be best fitted. I hope that this was good. And again, if you've made it to an assessment center, congratulations. If no one has told you, congratulations. And I wish you the best of luck. I hope that these tips from an assessor's point of view were helpful to you. And if you haven't yet checked out part one and two, please go check them out. And again, do subscribe and follow us for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.